I found an article on travel and leisure <laughs> that had the 15 ranked from one to 15 best places to retire in Florida. Come on, Justin, follow me. Come on, Justin. What we're gonna do. I'm do, sorry, do, 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 this do, wasn't, do, do, you do. didn't prepare me. I've got a messy. No, it's okay. It's not too messy in here. It actually looks way better than it normally does. That's not fair. I want your reaction to what um, travel and leisure is saying, like the number one place to retire versus- I bet I could guess. So I'm gonna give you these. Okay. You put them in order of what do you think, ranked one through 15, best place to retire versus worst place to retire. So they don't even say how they really came up with the list. Okay, well, I'm glad. And I like travel you, and leisure. They got you some. like our, my, our, my list, and my list was just on gut where people have been calling and saying, hey, I'd like information on this area and that area. So I'm kind of going on a, a popularity of, of interest. So number one place is Tampa Bay. So you had that at sixth place. Their number one place is Tampa. So Tampa Bay, obviously, if you're a sports fan, it, Tampa Bay is an easy one. You've got the Lightning, which are super cool to watch. Uh, you've got the Rays, you've got the Bucks, the Hard Rock Casino. You have Cruises. easy access to uh, some of my favorite beaches, Clearwater, um, so on and so forth. And then- The cruises that go out of Tampa. You've got cruises that go out of Tampa. So if you're boating, you wanna do fishing, things like that, obviously Tampa Bay has a lot to offer there. The reason I don't mind Tampa up top, I actually really enjoy Tampa. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on Tampa and around Tampa. Um, you have easy access to Crystal River North where we went scalloping which is super fun. That's a lot of fun. That's beautiful, that's fun. If you have a boat, like that's a really fun thing to be able to do. You have easy access to St. Pete, and then you're really not too far away from like Sarasota as well. My thing about Tampa, which is why I'm surprised it's number one, is all the super highways and the traffic and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think most people my age don't really want to get into that kind of traffic to get places. I agree. And so it, I'm surprised yeah. it's number one. I had it number six, but for those reasons, the cruising and the other stuff. But. Tons of cool stuff to do, but I agree with you. And then the other thing that you've got to kind of consider, if you are looking in 55 plus communities, is the majority of them are, are pretty far on the outskirts. So you're looking at um, San Antonio. There's a San Antonio, Florida. Uh, you're looking at like Wesley Chapel. So you're seeing a lot of 55 plus communities on the outskirts that are much farther inland, which have benefits, you know, traffic wise, traffic and weather and all that stuff in the first place. But in order to like actually access Tampa, a lot of these communities are still 40 minutes away from, you know, downtown. Are you still looking at like an hour drive to Clearwater Beach? Well, the interesting thing as far as just statistics on Tampa for this year so far, and we included condos and, and single family homes. And when we say condos, it could have been co-op that's a uh, mobile home kind of community, but you own the land. But in this particular year in Tampa Bay area, uh, 1,085 homes were sold. Top price, highest price sale was 1.7 million. And the lowest were around 100. Again, a little bit of an outlier. Both of those are outliers. We're talking about 350,000 could be a reasonable budget in the Tampa Bay area. To get into a, a 55 plus community. Yeah, and that's ballparking it, folks. We kind of just went, you know, and saw how many were about. Where, where, where's like the point. majority of the homes selling? The at. listings, yeah. yeah. All right, number two, you were pretty dang close on this. Sarasota. Okay. I think again, another one. I'm, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. So I love Sarasota. It's a really nice area, and we, we put Lakewood Ranch in there, and they did not have Lakewood Ranch. But you've got some really beautiful homes, like along Longboat Key, and then downtown is very walkable and gorgeous. And then you have Lakewood Ranch, which is like a master plan community with tons of golf, tons of 55 plus communities. My favorite thing about Sarasota is your proximity to St. Pete um, and then your proximity to Naples. You're right in between those two. So you really have a ton of cool stuff if you wanna go out outside of 
you know, your city and go explore and do some fun stuff, you have really quick access to Naples and St. Pete. So the boating out there looks phenomenal. Um, we've got a really cool shot. I put the drone up of a dolphin chasing a school of fish. You saw that, right? Oh my gosh, that was so cool. So that, that was in Sarasota. That'll give you an idea of how clear the water was out there that day. And then if you, you know, want to go up and see a lightning game, you're really not that far away. If you want to go down to Naples and- Fort and, Myers. Or, or Fort Myers, you're very close to Fort Myers. Yeah. Sanibel. So you got a lot of like cool stuff proximity wise. And it was, it's kind of, Old Florida boutique -y, very cool feel. Now yeah. the newer area is feeling new. And then to get to the beaches, mm -hmm. you got to hit those bridges just at the right time. So, but when you're retired, you get to kind of pick it out when you go to those beaches. And so, if you're someone looking for a condo, there's some beautiful views. 4.4 million for a luxury waterfront condo. It was beautiful. Again, you can buy a condo or or mobile home where you own the lot for around a hundred. And again, an outlier, we don't want to get, make you guys go, oh, I can buy for a hundred thousand. It's tough, tough pickings, but we'll get you the right agent that can help you with that. 475-ish is a good budget to go That's to where that a, area. A lot of that stuff was like, we were seeing a majority of Sweet them sitting spot. around there, like yeah, 450, 475, and then tons of stuff above that. You know, we didn't look at HOAs or anything, but really high HOAs can keep condo prices lower. So you don't have that sticker shock. You look at it like, oh, it's only $150,000, but then you go and your, your HOA is $700 and you're like- They were also small. Some of them were one. Oh, one ones. One ones. Yeah, you're looking at a lot of that. So number three, coming in at number three. I have no idea now. Gainesville. What? You had it all the wow. way down at 14. That's a college town. Love our college students, but why would a retiree live in Gainesville? There's not a whole lot going on other than UF. They do have plenty of healthcare. There's tons of springs out there. There's tons of national parks. I don't know. I, that one made no sense to me whatsoever. You know what Gainesville is missing? What? 55 plus communities. It does not have 55 plus communities. I mean, we found eight sales in the last year that claimed they were housing for older people and we're kind of questioning it. But it was on the list, so we had to put it. And it, there's only eight sales, 445 was the top. Um, we're thinking 300 is a decent budget in Gainesville. 175 was the low. I think it's an idiot that wrote the article. I think this is a bad article. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> All right, number four, um, I don't necessarily disagree with this one. Again. So Fort Lauderdale coming in fourth. I think the, the bright lines going through there, you have access to Miami. Um, and then if you head north, you got access to uh, like Boynton Beach and Vero Beach. You've got world-class golf. You've got tons of nightlife. You've got art. You've got, I think uh, Fort Lauderdale is some a place if you have a, a decent budget and you're very active and you like to to do a lot of stuff like it's, that it's shopping it's it's you know it, oh it's my jazz hands <laughs> that's the feeling if you feel like this right Fort that's might, right it yeah, feels like that it's like it's it's yeah. The, I don't the know. The other thing you have. It's not rural at all. It's shopping and nightlife. You've got a lot of resorts, a lot of resort style stuff. You've got another hard rock in Hollywood. So you can go to the casino, you've got cruises, you've got, I think there's just like a lot more action going on down there. You've got the traffic and all that stuff. It certainly pulled in scuba the numbers. Diving. That's true. Yeah, the scuba on the East Coast is if you're gonna scuba, that's where you go. So, you know, there, there's a there's a few reasons that you may particularly want to go there. I don't disagree. You had it way down here. I don't I don't necessarily disagree with I that. I guess I don't consider it. Like I could picture myself retirement, but when I'm retired and living in like a condo in Fort Lauderdale, that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, I haven't frequented that area of Florida, so I wasn't aware. Twenty two thousand two hundred and forty sales in housing for older people or or designated fifty five plus communities. Many of them were condos. The highest price sold, 7.1 million. I mean, that, that must have been Biscayne Bay or something, some snazzy place. 100,000 again, can find those outliers. And then your 400,000, there's quite a few pages of $400,000 sales, so. Coming in number five, you ready? 
Ready. Fort Myers. I also love Fort Myers. I don't mind. I don't mind Fort Myers being somewhere up towards the top. So now much easier access to Naples. Pretty freaking easy to get to Sarasota. And then you've got uh, obviously you're a big fan of Fort Myers. They did get hit pretty hard with the hurricane, recovering at the moment. Um, but Fort Myers Beach. So you've got beaches. You've got uh, plenty of boating and fishing. The water's pretty tame in the inlets. So you've got a lot of like flats boats and things like that. Just, uh, I don't know. I mean, Fort Myers just feels like a, a, a Florida beach town to me. It's super nice. There's not a ton of dedicated 55 plus communities. Uh, Fort Myers, the, the traffic dramatically changes between the winter and the summer. True. So Kate, you've got a lot of people that have second homes in Fort Myers. Hmm. In order to be titled housing for older people or 55 plus, it has to be deed restricted. Some of the communities are targeted for 55 plus, but they don't restrict it. Only 69 sold in this year so far in the Fort Myers area. 1.3 million was the top. Again, 100,000 for the low. We're thinking 400,000 is a, is a good ballpark price point. Number six, Orlando, Florida, coming in at number yeah. six. So why did you put it in number three? Up top, because I thought I thought between the parks and and you know including Claremont, Leesburg, Kissimmee, I just thought we would be a little bit more of a and the so, and the edges are kind of you know I think I just Orlando's it was the center of the state. It was perfect. I think Orlando's. I'm a big, huge fan because you you kind of have easy access to everything. So you can get to Tampa, you can get to the opposite coast, the Space Coast pretty easy. You can get up to Jacksonville, you can get down, or you can get up to Ocala, you can get down to Lakeland. For Orlando, you also have like Dr. Phillips Center, Amway, so tons of entertainment. You've got City Walk and Universal. And I mean, in terms of like, I don't know what you call that, like big entertainment. The other thing is Disney. So if you're a huge Disney fan, obviously Orlando. Well, your grandkids come whether you are or not. Your grandkids can go to Disney. Um, and if, if, if your grandkids are gonna go to Disney and you're gonna do it once a year, you could drive up from Tampa. You know what I mean? That's true. But that's if, you're true, gonna, that's true. if you're gonna frequent Disney, then it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I love having the lakes. Obviously, uh, you know, having the, the peace of mind from hurricanes is nice and then Quite a few sales. Low priced. Yeah, what, what do we got? 1,246 sales this year so far. 1.04, so a million dollars was the high. What's funny about that is when we were looking at it, it was basically all Del Webb Oasis and Del Webb Sunbridge, which if you guys are familiar with- Lakes of Mount Dora. And then uh, Lakes Mount Dora. So those three were like the, they had some houses that were like 1,900,000, you know, like mm -hmm. right in that, right in that range. Yeah, low, 100,000. We kind of stopped there. We, but it was like 150. So the one that popped up was actually in Mount Dora and that was the, what was the condo? Villa Dora. Villa Dora. Mm -hmm. Mount Dora is separate on the list. So they yeah. don't have that part of Orlando. I consider Mount Dora to be like part of Orlando I do too. too. And then so, but 350,000, you're, you're gonna have some choices. This one is, again, doesn't make any sense to me. Number seven, you had it dead last, Gulf Breeze. I don't even know where that is. So I Gulf, had to ask. Yeah, Gulf Breeze is like a little peninsula section of a peninsula, we'll put a map up, but it's before Pensacola Beach. So it's in between Pensacola and Pensacola Beach. And it's just this little section, it's got a, like a reserve over here. And it's just, it's just, you got access to the Pensacola Beach, you got access to Pensacola. The Panhandle is interesting, you have access to Destin. There's a lot of people that, that um, you know, will do vacations to the Panhandle from like Alabama, Mississippi, parts of Georgia. Zero listings, zero sales, and a 55 plus. I think it gets slept on a little bit. I think it's probably actually a cool place to retire. They don't have any 55 plus. That was a weird one, and we didn't. We got zero because there was no 55 plus. So we, I don't know what the travel and leisure were thinking. So you had this one up here. I, I've lost track of where you're at, but St. Petersburg, they have as number eight. Hmm. I disagree with this. I would have put this towards the top. Well, it should be up there with Sarasota. 
I agree. I would put this as like number three, number two. I would put it up the top somewhere. I love St. Petersburg. I think that it's a fun, walkable downtown. I think there's there's sailing. There's a cute little airport that's so easy to get in and out of. You can take the Skyway down to Sarasota. I would retire in St. Pete all day. I would, one of those high rises overlooking the, the like you're right downtown, so you're walkable to everything. You're overlooking, you know, the bay, but there's the pier and sailboats parked all over the place. There are little sailboats going around. 770 sails mm -hmm. just in St. Lots Petersburg. of condos, lots of condos. Lots of condos. Uh, they had even one one condos, right? Again, 100,000, you can get yourself something small. What's the high? I'm curious what the high is. 950,000. Yeah. But we didn't even come up with a medium because they were all over the place. It was, it was almost. There was no, no one price point that, that looked good. So we're just gonna throw it out there, 450, 500. You guys are gonna be blown away at the rest of these. Some of these just don't make sense at all. So Jacksonville's next. Jacksonville, I would have put higher, but see, this is the thing, is Jacksonville and is Ponte Vedra Beach is basically Jacksonville. So it's kind of weird that they separated those two. I don't think you'd want to retire in Jacksonville. I think you'd want to be in Ponte Vedra Beach or... Um, well, but the, remember, there are all those outlying new communities. Jacksonville's becoming a 55 plus magnet. tons of cool stuff, tons of cool stuff. And it's right in between, you know, a lot of the 55 plus is right in between Jacksonville and St. Augustine yeah. is really where, where that's at. And there's a lot of cool stuff there. But in terms of like actual Jacksonville, Jacksonville, well, and it shows in the numbers. We had 95 sales in Jacksonville okay, that were you go. deed restricted. Yeah. And then 785 was the top, which kind of surprised me. I thought there'd be some over that, but 785 was top. And then 250 is your low, but because they probably don't have those mobile manufactured, you know, because we did just Jacksonville. So it's more of a 250 to 700 and you're in Jacksonville. All right, number 10. Key West, which you had down here at like 13. I think Key West would probably be fun. I think Key West is like, um, it's fun to go vacation there. I think Key West is like the villages of non 55 plus. Mm -hmm. Like if you were gonna live there full time, it would be a lot of, and you've got, it's beautiful. You know, if you're a boater and it's stuff like that. It's almost the opposite of Fort Lauderdale. All the shopping activity, Fort Lauderdale, blah, blah, blah. You get down in the Keys, you better lay back and go fishing. It depends if you're in Key yeah, West. Key West is very Key West shoppy. is bars and it's shops. The Southern Point. It's this You've got a big. whole board walk, boardwalk with like seven different street performers in Key West. I yeah, know, but I, I think so a like, visit or maybe the Snowbirdy retirement. But t can you imagine I living there year round? The only way I, I could you'd have to live on a boat or really. I was be about that. to say the only way this would make sense to me is if you were uh, an avid boater. You key, the keys are. An incredible place to be on a boat. Yes, that's true. If you don't yeah. have a boat, I think you would probably get a little sick of being just. And then you in have the to US. drive all the way. It's it is hard a to long get drive. It takes so like you, you a, better have your plane or your boat ready. I mean, it's fun if it's if that's the lifestyle you're looking for. I would say if you're not boating though, I think like during the day you'd probably get pretty bored every yeah. single day being there. Number eleven, <laughs> Saint Augustine. I would have put that higher. I like Saint Augustine again. I think Jacksonville, St. Augen, Ponte Vedra Beach are kind of lumped together. If you're looking in one of those areas, you can easily look in another and you're still relatively close. St. Aug, historic, beautiful beaches, great places to eat. You have easy access to Jacksonville. You have easy access down into uh, Palm Beach and the whole um, you know, Space Coast. So Coco, Daytona, all that, all that stuff's pretty easy to get to. And then in St. Aug, you have like, really cool places to eat and drink and plenty of stuff to do. It's an, it's a good old, it's a historic town. It's been there very forever. Historic. I mean, the town is very cool. It gets pretty touristy because everybody likes to go visit yep. St. Og. Um, so again, so there's only 113 sold, 700,000 at the top, 340 was the low, and you're looking around, good to buy in St. Og for around 450. Yeah, I like St. Aug. I would put it higher. Again, we we 
you've got a couple of left. I'm assuming these are going to be next. Pontevedra because it's... Pontevedra Beach! It's a Way right, to call it. It's a right to there. <laughs> <laughs> so, number 12, Pontevedra, Pontevedra Beach, which is next to... Um, yeah, Nakati. Nakatee, which is next to Nakati. So again, lots of new 55 plus communities coming to that Master area. Master planned area. And then along the river. I mean, there's there's a lot of cool stuff in Jacksonville. There's a ton of cool stuff. So really, if you're interested in that area, you've got some options between St. Augustine and Jacksonville. Pona Vidra Beach is just outside of Jacksonville. Again, it's weird that they separated them. Yeah, I'd put all those three. If you're looking, I would go to Jacksonville, St. Aug, and Punta Vedra. And for and us, like that's when we do a Jacksonville video, or when we lump like Jacksonville together, that's where we look. consider St. Aug as part of that. So, Punta Vedra and Nakatee we included. Uh, 129 sales, 1.13 million was the top, and I think that was that in- That could have been um, Nakatee for sure. Nakati is a guess. Punta Vedra is pretty pricey too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 320, 320 was the low. So you're starting higher there, folks. Starting higher, yeah. 500,000 would be an okay budget. Vero Beach, number 13. <laughs> Vero Beach is north of Port St. Lucie. It's got world renowned golf courses. Again, you're on the East Coast, so you got scuba diving. Wouldn't you go to Vero and Port St. Lucie, though, if you were looking in that area? Yeah, I would. You'd go to both of those. I would. So. Um, beautiful beaches. And then, you know, again, in terms of vicinity, you're kind of starting to split like Daytona and Miami. So you can get down to Miami, you can get down to Fort Lauderdale, you can get to access to all that. Then you Your can go cruises. north. And you've got uh, Port Canaveral and the whole Space Coast. So you've got access to that. So you like. 144 sales. A million two was the top. 150 was the low, which we were shocked to even find that. So there must be outliers. 450-ish, get use that as a as a budget. Number 14, again, I think this is an odd one. Actually, the next two just don't make any sense. So we've got Ocala, which is super popular. And it's super popular because it's affordable and then it's low-key. So if you're interested in a low-key area, with tons of national forests around you. You still have access to Orlando. You still have access to Gainesville and the Springs up north. You have access Jackson, to Crystal yeah. River. You have access to the East Coast pretty easy. Yeah. So to me, the Ocala makes sense for someone that doesn't want to spend uh, an arm and a leg on a house and then doesn't mind or actually prefers a little bit more of a low key you know, lifestyle. Don't you feel like Ocala has kind of been the sleeper, though it literally has been getting a lot of new communities and a lot of uh, publicity to move there in the last 10 years. Before that, it was a horse town with that's a small true. downtown. So I oh, maybe that's- Speaking of horses, that's, that's another big piece. Yeah, the They've got the World Equestrian Center there and stuff. You, everyone knows about Ocala now. Yeah, well, let at me give the numbers. Not retiring. I, I was kind of surprised at this, 159 sales in Ocala. 730, 733,000 was the top, 195. And I think that's reasonable. You can find stuff in there for around 200,000. 300,000 is about the better starting price though. Yep. Mount Dora, Mount Dora has gotten voted so many times. Mount Dora, lowest place, and this is like That's so- That's been like the best place to retire How so many times. How crazy is that? We're just, you and I are just furious right now. <laughs> Mount Dora in 15th place? It just makes no sense at all. Listen, Mount Dora, you know, if you don't want a 55 plus community, I think Mount Dora, downtown Mount Dora would be a phenomenal place to retire. It's really pretty affordable. If you do want a 55 plus community, there's lakes of Mount Dora and it's a little bit pricier. Um, and then there's, what's the condo complex? Villa Dora. Villa Dora. That's right off of Fifth Street. You're, oh. you're walking downtown from Walkable to downtown. Well, the lowest price that we got from a sale was one of those condos, and they're your typical 2-2 condo for 150000 150. That's I would crazy. do that all freaking day. I know. Day. I didn't know. This, I, is, this I, blows my mind. And then downtown Mount Dora is so charming. It's so cute. It's not too big. It's walkable. It has some of the best restaurants that you could get in freaking all of Orlando, the great Orlando area, are just in this 
cute little downtown off of Lake Dora. And, and then Chino you got the Lakes. Harishina Lakes. Yeah. You could sail on them, they're big enough, but then they have pocket lakes where you could tool around on a pontoon and go eat at hurricanes, pull your boat up and or park That's it true. down. That's I mean so it's fun. it's a There's festivals in downtown Mountain. And then when they have yeah, events, it pops so off. Fifty-nine sales, nine hundred and thirty-seven thousand was the top. Oh, we kind of talked about it. And then 150 for the condo. Yeah. 150 for the condo. And about 400,000 is a, is a good base price. If you need help finding a 55 plus community, you need a specialist that specializes in the retirement communities and knows this stuff in and out. It doesn't even hurt to reach out if you're a couple years out because they can absolutely help you plan your trips down, tell you what you should see, give you an idea of what sort of budgets certain communities are going to be in, all sorts of good stuff. They are liaisons for your 55 plus search, for your <laughs> retirement journey. Uh, anyways, if you want to get connected with someone on the team, visit explore55plus.com. You can get connected directly with one of the agents, or if you have questions or anything like that, you can always uh, call us, text us, or email us directly. All that's on the screen. And I love you guys. See you soon. All right, hey, my name is J. Michael Martz, and we got a list from Travel and Leisure, 15 of the top 55 plus communities, and we think it's bull****. So we're going to go over it, and we're going to redo their list. Travel and Leisure, you got something else coming for you, buddy.